Uh, that was completely unnecessary. <laughs> but, yeah, what else do I got to do? Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host, CJ. And in my last video, I built a distance learning PC with my son so he could participate in all his various video conferences. Now, of course, for the same price, I could have accomplished the same goal with a simple budget laptop like this Dell Inspiron. Unfortunately, at the time I was planning his build, budget under $500 laptops were just not available thanks to the almost worldwide stay-at-home orders. However, as of the time of filming, they're starting to re-enter the marketplace. I did a quick search and was able to find three comparable laptops in stock at my local Best Buy. So if you're in the need of a computer to work from home or to do your distance learning with the ability to video conference, these laptops are great options. You get a complete system in a nice little package. Now, if you need something for basic office or schoolwork, you can find everything you need for under $400. Keep in mind, you don't need a high spec system to do this. Take this one. I bought this about two years ago for my wife and she used it every day over those two years to complete her degree. Spec wise, it has an Intel Core i3 two core four thread 2.7 gigahertz CPU with integrated HD 620 graphics eight gigabytes of RAM, and it came with a one terabyte mechanical hard drive, which I since upgraded to a one terabyte SSD. What it doesn't have is a touchscreen because unless you just really need one, it'll drive up the cost by up to $100. It also doesn't have dedicated graphics or a mobile GPU because those are expensive and not necessary for basic office or schoolwork. Some things that might be worth spending a little extra money on, maybe a larger screen. If you need more screen real estate, you may want to step up to a 17 inch screen. Also, many laptops in the sub $400 price range now include solid state drives, or at least an SSD as the boot drive and a hard drive as a secondary storage drive. I would definitely recommend this as you'll likely end up needing to replace a primary hard drive sooner than later, like I had to do. Now, with all that said, I'm also acutely aware that many people are struggling to make ends meet right now and would be hard pressed to even afford $250 for a new laptop. So today, I'm gonna take an old laptop and make it new again. This is my old Dell Studio 17. I bought this in 2009 and it was my daily driver for a long time. When I upgraded, my wife used it for a while until she upgraded and for the last two years my daughter's been using it now it is starting to show its age but spec wise it's still a very capable system it has an intel core 2 duo t9550 dual core 2.7 gigahertz processor and amd mobile radeon hd 3650 dedicated graphics only four gigabytes of memory but still enough to do the job as long as i can keep my daughter from opening a dozen Chrome tabs at one time. It has a 17 inch 1920 by 1200 display and a 1200p webcam, but it also has not the original hard drive, but a six year old 340 gigabyte hard drive that's beginning to fail. And in fact, it did fail. I was able to reconstruct the master boot record to get it up and running again, but it'll need replacing. It's also running very hot with CPU temps in the 70s at idle. So my plan today is to first show you the two very basic and inexpensive things you can do to breathe new life into an old laptop. Then I'm gonna do a complete teardown of the system and prepare it for a full refurb. Because besides just the performance issues, this laptop has seen better days and has a fair amount of cosmetic problems. I mean, the lid doesn't close straight and it's loose and floppy. Pieces are broken off and not fitting correctly. This lid was actually purple when I bought it and has at least a couple of paint jobs since. My 
daughter doesn't like its current black matte look and wants a pink computer to match her room. We'll see what we can do about that. So the first step, show you how to fix the performance problems, then a tear down and figure out what parts need replacing. Once I figure that out, I'll get online and order those parts. And that's where we'll end this part of the video. But when all the parts arrive, my plan is to maybe do my first live stream where I'll do the rebuild with all the new parts and see if my daughter approves. So let's get started. And the first thing I'm gonna do is remove the bottom access panel. So even more than building desktop PCs, my technical experience is troubleshooting and fixing laptops. In my army days, when we deployed around the world, soldiers brought laptops because, well, it was tough to drag a desktop PC to a combat zone. And in the parts of the world we ended up, those laptops would break down. It wasn't like you could bring it to the geek squad, but if you were lucky, you had a geek in your squad, and that was me. And the number one most common problem was this, a failed or failing mechanical hard drive. The fix is easy. Replace it with a much more reliable solid state drive, which is what I have here, a SanDisk 480 gigabyte SSD. The brand of SSD really isn't that important. Some are faster than others, some are more expensive. The key is you don't have to go too big or too expensive. Whatever you use will be so much faster and much more responsive than the old mechanical hard drive you take out. And what I'm actually gonna do, since I did restore this hard drive to a semi-usable state, is clone it to the new SSD. I did a whole video on that when I replaced the hard drive in my wife's laptop. You can check it out here if you're interested. But let's move on to fixing the second most common problem with laptops, which is overheating, which leads to thermal throttling, which leads to a deathly slow computer. Just like desktop PCs, laptops have a cooling solution for the CPU and GPU if there is one. So for this cooling solution, what we see is that we can see a copper heat pipe that leads to the CPU and the motherboard chipset. That copper pipe leads to a heat sink and fan. And then second heat pipe here leads to the GPU in this system, which also leads to a heat sink cooled by the same fan. And just like in a desktop, a thermal interface material is used between the die and the cold plate, thermal paste. Two things can happen over time. First, the thermal paste is forced out by what is known as pump out. So when the metal cold plate heats and cools, it expands and contracts. And over time, that continued expansion and contraction actually pumps the paste right out of the cooler. The second thing is the paste can just dry up over time and when that happens, depending on the compound, it can actually insulate the dye, causing the temps to rise. Simple fix, repaste the dyes. And to be honest, I don't think I've ever repasted this laptop. So this is very likely the original 11 year old stock thermal compound in here. So let's take a look. Doesn't look too bad, okay, let me uh. Okay, and to get to the GPU, it looks like we have to take the entire bottom chassis off, which we're gonna do anyway.
Okay, now keep in mind the only thing I needed to do to get this laptop running like new again was replace the drive and repaste the CPU with some of my Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut here. And yes, I'm aware that this 11 year old CPU probably has some silicon degradation, but keep in mind it's a low TDP chip. So it wouldn't be as bad as a desktop CPU would be after 11 years. But back to my point, I didn't need to tear it completely apart like this and not everyone would be comfortable doing that. Unfortunately with this particular model, I did have to pull the motherboard to get to the GPU. But now that I do have it completely disassembled, I can clean it all really, really well. I'll do the same thing I did to the RX 580 graphics card in that refurb video. But first I'll get online and see if I can find the parts I want to replace. Again, those are the keyboard, that bezel, the screen trim, the back panel and hinges, basically the entire lid minus the LCD panel. I'm also gonna see if I can find a replacement battery for a good price as this has been plug-in only for years now. Luckily, parts for these older Dell or HP, Lenovo or other popular laptops are usually pretty easy to find. So let's get on eBay and see what we can find. Okay, I've done some shopping. Let's take a look at what I found. First thing, I got a used keyboard. I found some new ones, but for $14.63, I really couldn't beat that. Uh, price for a genuine backlit keyboard. So I picked that up again, didn't really need it, but why not? Next, I did find the screen trim. It actually comes with the power and Wi-Fi buttons pre-installed, uh, 1349, probably a little more than uh, I really needed to pay. I found some for cheaper, but they included shipping that would have taken longer. So uh, sometimes you gotta pay for expedited shipping. Next. I was able to find that full bezel um, with the cam window, $10, couldn't beat that one. And the creme de la creme, I got a brand new back cover that comes complete with the hinges and all the antenna pre-installed. Oh, and it's pink, so. Somebody should be happy about that. And then finally, I was able to find some batteries on eBay, but not at this price here. This, I just, I could have beat this price with free shipping. We'll be here quickly. A replacement battery for $23.49. So I got everything I was looking for. Didn't take me long to find. Could have got them at better prices, but was also looking to get them here quickly so I can finish this project up and get my daughter her laptop back. Okay, that's it for this one, guys, for now. Like I said, once I get all the parts in, I'll be reassembling the system, hopefully in the live stream. The only caveat there is I am waiting for a Blackmagic scene switcher that's on back order so I can switch between more than one camera view, which is what I'm limited to with my current setup. If not, I'll just do a regular video on it. But the main takeaway for this is that if you have an old laptop that really isn't working like it should, you can most likely fix it with just the two steps I showed you here. Also, if you don't, have an old laptop but are looking for a project because you know you're stuck at home and bored out of your mind there were several of the studio 15s on ebay for under 50 bucks that looked like they were pretty easily repairable why not give it a shot let me know in the comments below if you have any questions and i hope to see you in the next one until then i'm cj and you stay safe